This ZX Spectrum board came to me about 10 years ago, with unobtainable parts missing. But in recent years new and improved parts have been developed. In this series we'll rebuild this machine. Let's see what we need right now. The ZX Spectrum is an iconic British 8-bit computer from the 1980s. Based around the Zilog Z80 processor, it was built to a very tight price point by Sir Clive Sinclair of Sinclair Research. His vision was that every British home would be able to afford a computer. But this 48K Model 4A has a lot of things missing. The power jack has been hijacked. The 7805 regulator has vanished with a poof. The edge connector is dirtier than an 80s weekend at Butlins. The sockets for ear and mic have taken a hike. Keyboard connector 2 is present, but keyboard connector 1 isn't. The lower RAM is all present, but one of the upper RAM chips is but a lost memory. The ULA chip, which is the beating heart of the Spectrum, is completely conspicuous by its absence, and the modulator for putting images on the telly box has been nicked, revealing an embarrassing understain. The underside of the board is in good condition. Big thanks to ZX Renew for providing new parts. Let's take a look. The power socket is pretty standard stuff. I'm not sure why anyone would bother desoldering one when they're so cheap. This is a new replacement. Next is a regulator. It takes the unregulated 9 to 14 volts you find in a Sinclair PSU and brings it down to 5 volts which feeds the power section. Standard regulators get hot and this machine is missing its heatsink. We're going to use a modern 7805 regulator replacement. This one is very efficient and doesn't need a heatsink. It supplies 5 volts at 1 amp, just like the original regulator. With the missing upper RAM chip, I'll obtain a suitable replacement and install it via a socket for testing. The ear and mic sockets are important for saving and loading programs. We're going to give this Spectrum an upgrade and use these gold plated sockets just because we can. They're not a direct pin match. And this extra leg will need to be removed. No one really wants to tune into an RF signal these days, but we do need something in place of the missing modulator. Luckily, I have this old modulator that I found in a job lot of spare parts. We'll make this fit and repurpose the output as composite instead of RF. It even has the card ring for the socket. Because everybody needs a presentable ring. KB1 is another trip to the spares box. I've found this rather bent socket which I can straighten out and use. Original 48K ULAs can only be obtained from other Spectrums, which defeats the point of fixing this one. Luckily a clever chap called Charlie Inglay in New Zealand has made a modern drop-in replacement. These are available from ZX Renew in the UK and are simply a matter of installing in the socket. All 
all the original factory fitted capacitors will be replaced with modern Panasonic capacitors. But there's a problem. We don't have a case. And now we do. And it's a beauty. This is a limited edition clear case. It was made before the moulds were shot blasted to produce frosted cases. For the keyboard membrane we could use this brand new replacement membrane from ZX Renew. We could, but we're not. ZX Renew also sell this wonderful clicky Velosoft anti-ghosting keyboard. A serious upgrade to the dead flesh feel of the 80s. It comes in two variants, with or without LEDs. As the key mat we're using isn't transparent, we're going to use the non-LED version. Which still leaves me with a lot of fun soldering. I best make sure I get these diodes the right way around. Talking of the key mat, we have this brand new deep black key mat for the build. These are also produced by Retro Radionics and sourced through ZX Renew. Just to fondle it until all its holes are filled from the rear. And to top it off, we have this beautiful golden faceplate. More 80s than David Hasselhoff drinking Slush Puppy on a BMX bike. On the underside of the machine we have four rubber feet. They're self-adhesive and transparent so match the case really well. And finally, we'll need to do some serious screwing, just to bring the machine to completion. Well, that brings us to the end of this first video. Join me in the next episode where we'll build the whole thing and troubleshoot it. A big thanks to all my Patreon supporters. If you'd like to help support my work, please visit patreon.com forward slash stuff. Thanks for watching this video. Perhaps you'd like to watch some others. Here, I'll put them on the screen for you. Bye.